will be fun. Uh, so let me uh, start off with saying, you know, quick quick preview of the first and second workshops. The first workshop we learned about the uh, what a workspace is. It's a common thing you'll hear about in software. It's the folder which which has a specific kind of structure, like a, su a subfolder with a source file, libraries, um, a CMake file, all the things that help you build and package the software as a binary and help it run in its target environment. And so that was what we did on the first workshop. And then in the second workshop, we, we tightened that workspace up into a container so that it can be deployed onto different operating systems. And, and it's, it's easier to manage all the dependencies of the software inside that container. So uh, we learned about VS Code and Docker and the different utilities that VS Code and Docker offer, uh, particularly the different settings in VS Code and all those extensions that help us utilize um, Docker and CMake and, and even um, GitHub Copilot for, uh, for the uh, code generation and IntelliSense and C++ tools and CMake tools to help us um, define function calls, debug stuff. We, we put in configuration files for running and building and debugging code. Uh, so that's what we covered in the first and second workspace. Um, quick. In, 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 in this, uh, before we go into uh, the third one, I wanted to show you the Docker extension, which I, I didn't do the last time. So this, it kind of looks like this whale over here. And in here, there are all these uh, things you can do with the containers and we'll be using that. Uh, so that's kind of a continuation from the last workshop. Um, so starting with the third workshop, now that we know how to pack package one application and deploy it, um, you know, it's time to, to try doing it with multiple applications. And in, in one of the things that that's very commonly used in any kind of uh, real time system or any system at all is, is middleware. So there are all kinds of different middleware. There's um, aerospace industries have their own middleware that runs on top of the operating system. And, and then so do automotive. They, they all have different standards for it. And, and then the middleware facilitates the communication between applications that are running um, in, in sync, sync with each other. So, um, ROS is a very widely uh, utilized robotics middleware, and it it's used for building uh, software architectures, multiple applications that are talking to each other, and it facilitates the communication across different applications that are written in different programming languages. Um, and it has a lot of other utilities as well to visualize what's going on, draw graphs for things, um, uh, to, uh, it has open source libraries of its own. It has a very thriving uh, open source community of people who are releasing things called packages and will be building these packages. So these ROS packages are essentially the pieces of software that we built earlier in the uh, the workspaces. And, and so different people will deploy packages to ROS and then they're available for, for use uh, for robotics projects. And then we can also build our own packages and, and uh, have them run in that ROS ecosystem. Um, any questions so far? Nope. Have you, have you, are you both aware of Ross? What's your level of familiarity around it? Or what have you um, learned about it in the past? This is, this is new to me. Me okay. too. All right. Yeah, Ross is, uh, Ross is fun. It's, it's one of the, like, you know, just, you'll see now how seamless it makes it to run multiple applications. And so we'll just see without, um, without standing on ceremony too much. So I'm gonna go into the, the folder where this code is. All right, so uh, 
again, I we we talked about this earlier in our um, first session about VS Code and being in the WSL environment, um, and then having Git. So all the code that I'm bringing up here uh, is in Git and will be in the step three orchestrate folder uh, that, that I pushed last night. Uh, Yurik, do you need some time to, to pull that folder and get set up? No, I have it up now. I have, I have yours and I'm uh, cloning it into mine. Nice, okay. Uh, so if you, if, so if you have, if you have the platform workshops repository cloned, when you do git pull, the step three uh, folder should come right in. Um, all right. So we're in this folder now. I'm going to do a quick LS to see what's in here. And you see here, we have the compose file. Um, and this is the file that we used last time to uh, bring up a Docker workspace. Um, the good thing is that I won't ask you to install ROS on your computer. Uh, Docker, Docker has a number of images up on, on their registry. And they, so they have, usually have an image for every Ubuntu version. They have images for various um, versions of ROS, so just the basic slim ROS with just the bare bones ROS packages. And then in this case, we're going to be using the jazzy desktop full noble image, which is the full whole deal of ROS and all a lot of different packages and UI that, that, that it operate with, uh, within the ROS environment um, that run on the Ubuntu noble uh, a version OS. And, and so that's our compose file. Let me just talk about this a little bit. So as you can see, uh, we, we talked about it in the last um, workshop. In your compose file, you describe services and, and the, the pieces of memory on your computer that that service uses. And so the service we're describe, uh, defining in the compose file is the robotic service. And the robotic service is going to use this image that I talked about. And it's going to pull, when I do compose up, it's going to pull that image uh, or use it from my cache, which because I pulled it before, it, it already, it's already on my computer. But if you don't have it on your computer, it will pull it from the registry. It's smart enough to pull updates. So this one thing to note is that there are images that are not frozen. So they can be updated. And then when you pull, you might be in for a nasty surprise if it's not a frozen image. Uh, you could be pulling updates. So just know when you're working with, with Docker that if you have an image that gets up, if you, you have a tag that is, uh, say, dev or something, it's getting updated. Uh, on on the on the registry, and when you do a pull, uh, you know you don't necessarily have to get change your tag to get an update. So that's just something to know about Ross. Uh, sorry about Docker. And so in this case, we have an image definition. I give this container a name um, so that when this image gets built up in into a container, I know what what it's called, and then I define a volume for it. So what, this is my local Ubuntu uh, folder that you see here, and it's going to map within the container to the robotics workspace. So this is where all of our code is gonna go from this workshop, and that's where in, in the container, that's your uh, point of origin. Um, next, you see this TTY and STDIN. Uh, these are uh, some commands that let you uh, some definitions that let you work in the uh, terminal environment inside of the container. All right, so now I'm gonna do a Docker compose up and it should then pull this image, right? So it's building this 
image layer by layer. And we talked about how, you know, one layer is the Ubuntu layer, then it's adding layers of ROS, adding other utilities, so layer by layer, it's building the container from this image, which is a recipe for the container. So it looks like there might have been some updates because it's pulling some new stuff. Thankfully, my internet connection is good enough that this should should only take a couple more seconds. Right, that's pulling it fast, uh huh? Yeah, some of these images are really ginormous. So one thing, you know, if your image is several gigabytes, you might want to think about why. If if you have you know, in a in a team where you're developing software. It, images can get really big with lots of people adding lots of software into it. And, and you, either sometimes you, there's bloat in terms of all the dependencies, or you might want to, to segregate some images so that they're uh, scoped to certain uh, domains. But that's a whole other discussion. So while that's building, you can I can show you the extension here. This is the uh, list of containers. These are the images that I have in my um, in my environment. So looking to see what this hopefully should come up soon. I don't see the I don't see this image from yesterday. So maybe I uh, pruned it out. Oh, while, while that's loading, I can also show you, we talked about last time Docker desktop. So um, I remember recommending that you get the, um, just install the Docker engine, but it actually does make sense to install the Docker desktop as well, because I think it, it can give some, some good you know, UI. Plus I think there are a lot of commands that are only available if you have Docker desktop. So if you don't have it uh, and you plan on using Docker in your development environment, it's probably worthwhile to get Docker desktop. And then in the dev environment, you can, um, I think there's one setting here where you can say run as WSL. So uh, it, it, it lets you define the WSL environment as well. Uh, I'll have to remember. Oh, there it is. Use WSL2 based engine. So here it's essentially running the Docker in the WSL environment. So while we were talking about that, thankfully this image did load. <laughs> Would hate to cancel the workshop waiting for that. Uh, but here you can see it's like it's running now. Um, and you can see that there's a play button here. And the, this is the Docker extension. Uh, if I right click this, it and I say attach visu visual studio code, it's going to open up another window that um, another to, uh, vi visual studio window where I can basically operate inside of this image. Um, Yurik, did you have luck, any luck with this step? Uh, not yet. Um, uh, uh, installing um, Docker still. I, okay. I thought I had it on there, but I, I didn't, so I'm pulling it up no now worries. in the background. No worries. It's taking a while to load this as well. No why. Oh, there it is. Um, so yeah, this can be easy to miss. When you when you right click on that, it brings up this option up here, and then you have to click on that to actually load this image. So now it's connecting to the container. All right. And so you see this robotic workspace? Now we're inside the Docker image. And we have our um, Visual Studio environment, so it's it's easy to work within this space and still have your IDE. Uh, your terminal now points to the. It's still pointing to that um, to this, 
but now it's it's mapped to the workspace inside the Docker image. And what's special about the Docker image is that here we have ROS. Um, here we have all the packages that we need to build our projects. Make sense so far? Yeah, yes. so far so good. Yep. All right, good. Uh, so I'm gonna bring up my readme and we're gonna uh, proceed with with figuring out how to let me close this guy and zoom in so we can see this this as well. And I might have to install some of my extensions again. So this happens all the time. Is uh, let's see, zoom in doesn't have doesn't give me the option to zoom in. Interestingly enough appearance oh there it is was there all along all right um so now we have a docker um environment we're inside the container um that was step three now what we're gonna do is uh so this you'll see me do this i think probably 30 or 40 times over the session, it's it's muscle memory to me when I'm working in ROS because I, if someone has a way to not do this, put it in the comments because I almost always just manually source the Docker files. So now that I'm in the Docker container, it's uh, the ROS files. Uh, I still don't have, if I say ROS2, it says command not found, but I know that there's ROS inside this container. Uh, the reason it's not found is because the, the bash doesn't know how to find it. And in order for bash, uh, the terminal to know where it is, I have to source the files. Uh, so I have to source all those packages by doing source opt. This is where all the, the ROS packages are. Uh, source opt ROS jazzy and they uh, very graciously provide a bash script that that lets the terminal know all the ROS commands. And there we have it. Now, if I say ROS2, I get all these ROS2 commands, right? So anytime it says ROS2 command not found, it's because terminal doesn't know about it and I have to source it. And we'll be opening up many terminals in the course of this workshop. And every time we do, we have to source the ROS2 files. Um, there's probably a good way to set it up. I think, I haven't tried it, but I think one of the things we could do is put the command here. Uh, yeah, that's really what we would do is, is define, and I can try this later, define a command in the compose.yaml that brings it up in the first terminal, but I still don't know how to set it up so that there's a it does it for every terminal. But I I digress. For this workshop, we will just keep writing that command. Uh, all right. So now that we have ROS2, we were looking at looking at whoop, wrong button. All right. We're looking at the uh, the commands that Ross gives us, right? You'll see there's there's a lot of things it it has. It it lets you list the different packages. It lets you run a specific package. It lets you look at different topics, and we'll talk about what those are in a second. Uh, but let's just tinker with this with what we have here. Um, so Ross. As I mentioned, we you know has a number of packages. Um, we can see what it offers by saying ROS2 package list. So so what's a package? Uh, any any kind of intuition around that? Well, the package would be an. an, an... Uh, an entity unto itself that uh, has inputs and outputs and that is fixed uh, in code and mm -hmm. unchangeable unless you have the password. Uh, yeah, it's it's like it's the thing that some some developer might deliver, uh, and it usually it contains and we'll we'll talk about the the ROS definition of a package, but strictly in in ROS what it is and we'll see is that it has a package.xml file that describes it. 
Um, it has some source files, it has some library files, it can have, it can have code from multiple languages and more than one executable, uh, and generally does have more than one executable, but if it has more than one language in it, I would probably ask myself if it has to. Uh, I've built packages with, with both Python and C++ code in it, but I, I think my instinct is to try and keep the package very small and scoped. And if you have more than one language in the package, then maybe it's not as, as small as in scoped as it needs to be. But sometimes you might have like software drivers or something like that 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 might um, uh, might require you to to have more than one language in a package. The I think the. Uh, from an object-oriented programming perspective, it's a package is, is something that does a related set of things, right? So it, it fulfills a certain function and it has libraries, it has executables that do that. Um, and one of the things that we'll explore here is the uh, demo node uh, CPP, right? So this demo node is, is essentially a package for, for for people who are new to ROS to, to learn how nodes work. And a node in ROS is a, um, is a class that can uh, run in a, at a certain frequency uh, or it can do something and it can, it can act on callbacks, it can, it can send messages, it can receive messages. Uh, so it's a very, very, um, germane component in ROS. Almost everything that happens as a process is run by a node. And so you'll see that this is a, a demo node CPP. Are you familiar with that, that term node? I'm not, I'm asking because I, I'm not sure if it's used outside of ROS. With a packer? Mm -hmm. No, the, a node. A, a node, yes. Okay. Yeah, so the node, it's like, you know, ROS is generally a graph of different nodes that are talking to each other. And you, we'll, we'll see that when, when we're, we're putting different nodes together. Uh, so these, it's an, like a graph, right? A node has, uh, it sends messages, it receives messages, uh, but it also does stuff to do that. And it, it runs, usually there are function calls to define like the frequency at which a node runs a process. Um, Excuse me, Sana. Yeah. Um, to get ROS2, do I uh, install the ROS2 GitHub or do I have to go to ROS2 and install ROS2? No, the, the beauty is that um, you won't have to install ROS2 at all. You can oh, when you you bring it up. Yep. No, this, so this Docker container has ROS2 installed in it. So when, right now, when I'm here, this, this ROS2 is not on my computer. When I close this container, it's gone. It's it's all inside this this uh this container, and when you do the Docker compose up, um, that's that's gonna bring up a container that has ROS two in it. Got it. Thank you. Yep. Yep. So this is this is one of the things that makes Docker so appealing. Uh, you know, you you got like I hardly ever will install OpenCV or anything. I would look at Docker, look at the registries available. Um, Nvidia has different containers that they that they put up on do the Docker registry. There are so many different um, open source versions of software that you don't have to install on your computer at all. You you can pull up the Docker image and you can bring it up. So it's super safe when you when you do that. Um, were you able to bring up the container? I, uh, I'm assuming, Eurek, that you're working on it. Uh, I'm sorry, I'll, I'm working on getting myself off mute. <laughs> oh, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I've uh, installed Docker Run and, and I'm looking for Docker uh, Desktop. Uh, did you, ha okay, got it, got it. So you, you, when you do Docker run, does it say, um, hello world? 
or hello docker like does it bring you that message not yet no it, okay. it doesn't okay okay yeah let me know um or or i could stop and and help if if you need it just just let me know anytime no thank you no please don't stop go on okay um uh, all right sounds good so so uh let's see what we have here in ross 2 uh you know one of the packages that we have is the that's the demo node right so i'm gonna say uh so the format of the run command in ross is ross 2 run a package name and then an executable within that package so if i say uh ross 2 package list this is what i what what i got but if i say ross 2 package executable it, it actually gives me all these options of of what uh executables that are within uh within different packages so as you can see in the, in the demo nodes that are there is adding integers there is a listener there is a uh talker which we will which we'll be using here so what we're going to do is use the uh the talker and listener um in the demo node cpp to just see what ross does Right. So I'm going to split this terminal into two. Oh. Right. Source, don't forget. Okay. So now, I, I did put something in the, in the chat that might help avoid that source command, but it, but ooh. I wouldn't, uh, I, I wouldn't necessarily want to mess with it now. Okay. Uh, do you want to speak to it? Uh, well, uh, so there should be a, fi a file called uh, in the home directory called dot bash RC. Yeah. And yeah. if you put the source command in there, I think it would, keep you ha from having to type it every time. That's what I usually do when I'm in outside the Docker environment. Ah, okay. Because my bash RC corresponds to the WSL environment. Mm. And I'm not sure, well, well let me see. If I don't know. Yeah, that's a good, I want to just see while we're on the topic, uh, if there's a bash RC in here, Because it's usually in the home folder. Oh, there it is. Now we're on to something. Uh, let's see if we can. Uh, we can edit this. Voila. Nice. There we go. I just didn't try hard enough. If we can source. Ross set up dot batch. See if that works. Uh, there you go. Oh, uh, Docker desktop is installing on my computer now. It was uh, running in the background. I needed nice. to click a, 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 a an accept. Nice. All right, maybe that's gonna work. I'm gonna close this file and close this terminal and we shall see. Actually, let's just test it really quickly. Oh, that did work, Darren. Delightful. Good. You have no idea how much time we just saved. <laughs> 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 All right. Good stuff. Uh, okay. 
So let's let's run these uh, these two demo nodes, shall we? Uh, demo nodes CPP offer. And you know what I bet we can do is um, update the compose file so that it populates the bash RC when the con container builds. Um, and then that way we don't have to do it manually. Okay, so this is gonna, this talker node is gonna say hello world and, and count up the number of times it says that. And the listener node simply listens to what the, you know, what was said and and it says, oh, I heard hello world. And you can see that they're pretty much in lockstep. So what's going on under the hood, like, you know, these are these are running in separate terminals, but they're they're they have knowledge of what the other this will, the listener has knowledge of what the talker is doing and it's echoing it. And under the hood, raw sets up the communication uh, between these these nodes. So Notice also, well, in this case, I did um, I did a demo node Python, and I did a demo node C plus uh, plus. So it's a C plus plus program that's that's publishing this string hello world, and it's a Python application that's picking up that string and echoing it. And under the hood, uh, Ross enables that communication through something called a topic. Uh, and what, it, what I'll show you what the topic is in a second, uh, you can see when I split this terminal, I can say RQT graph, and it's gonna bring up this graph of what's going on. Here's my talker node, here's the listener node, the talker publishes its stuff on a on a topic called chatter, and the listener picks it up from that topic and and it it echoes it. Um, questions. So another thing just worth noting is if you if you uncheck the GUI button, um, the debug button, and you say all, it shows you everything else that's going on under the hood. So here you have this, when we brought up the RQT graph, we brought up another ROS node uh, that does that. And, and so you could see that in, in the RQT graph as well. But if you wanna just have a clean display of only the packages that that you commanded, um, then it, it just shows you the stalker listener, and then it's they're interacting through the chatter topic. All right, uh, moving on to cooler things. Now that you see what the canned packages are that that um, that Ross offered, maybe we can build some ourselves. Oh. For later, it, it's really cool to, to just explore Ross using this um, turtle sim package. So they have like a little video game with a turtle and you can use, use the, they, they go through a lot of tutorials uh, using that interface and it's a great way to, le to learn Ross and it's, it's just fun. Um, it's a good way to see how, through Ross, see how software works and, and how different applications talk to each other. So we talked about workspaces in, in part one, and let's create a ROS2 workspace now where our packages will live. So it's just a same thing that we discussed before. You know, your workspace has this source folder, it has our VS code configurations, um, it has this these files that I have here because I already built the code before. You you probably won't when you pull it from the, the repository. You should only see this VS code and source folder, um, compose and, and read me. Uh, so now what we're gonna do is uh, is if you don't have it, like we'll create the source folder. That's what makes this a workspace. And then we'll start um, adding uh, 
adding functionality to that workspace. And so we worked with, uh, with CMIC earlier and Qualcomm is the command line interface that Ross, off, Ross 2 offers that, that commands CMIC, uh, which is a C++ uh, build tool as well as Python setup tool. So given that Ross packages could be one or the other or both in the same package, uh, we use Qualcomm to build the package and it, it, when we say Colcon build and we don't have anything in the source folder, um, it'll just create these build, install, launch uh, files and, and it'll say, oh, I built something. So I'm just gonna call this source two for a second so I can demonstrate what it does in an empty folder. And I'll create another folder here. Okay, there I have it, my source folder. Uh, actually, you know what? I'm just gonna create a second folder all together. Come on. Yeah. Uh, I don't want get, to get too trigger happy with the delete because I accidentally deleted all of the workshop files yesterday. Thankfully, no harm was done <laughs> because they were all uh, under version control, but that did give me a small heart attack. create this mini workspace and create a source folder within it. All right. And then I'll navigate to mini workspace and say Qualcomm build. There. So it just doesn't do much, but it does give you some template uh, to build stuff in, right? And so it created some um, some some template files for us to uh, to work out, and and you can see that that's that's sort of what it's going to build. If you have if you have folders, you'll you'll add them to the source folder. So now let's create first a Python package, and then we'll create this is so this is our workspace, and our workspace can have any number of packages, uh, and we're gonna create both a Python package and a C++ package, and then we'll, we'll launch the two packages together. Uh, so I'm gonna go back to the mini workspace and sort of follow along uh, here with you guys and say, add a Python package to the source directory, right? So we're gonna add this by executing. Yeah, this is so. This is one of the reasons Ross is great. Uh, is you can add this package, you can add a C plus plus package, you can add a um, a Python package. And what we're gonna do today is we're going to create a hello world talker uh, that that spits out hello world, and it that's going to be in Python. And we're going to create a hello world translator that picks up what the talker is saying, translates it to Spanish and publishes it on a separate topic. Um, and we're going to just kind of see how that works. Sound good? Sounds good. Um, all right, cool. Sounds good. I'm back. <laughs> awesome. Did, did, did Docker uh, load? For you? Yes, it did load. Uh, I've got Docker test top now, uh, but it didn't me make me reboot. Oh, cool. Okay. So, but does it say hello world? Or hello Docker when you do Docker run? It's got the whole uh, Docker um, bells and whistles. Uh, All right. Nice. Uh, let me know once you're in, once you do a compose up and you're in the workspace. And so we can, we can reorient to where you are. 
Uh, and in the meantime, I'll proceed with creating these packages. So, sounds good. Uh, sounds good. So if I say ROS2 package create hello world author, and then I'm going to say a build type. See, when I do a tab complete, it usually brings up the options already. And Ament is is a um, another build tool that, that is built on top of CMake. And so it, it also offers the uh, utilities to build Python code. Um, and so there's an Ament for C++, there's an Ament for Python. And what Ross gives you is this package package conveniently that that creates templates depending on whether you're building a Python package or a C++ package and it, it just sort of creates these all the files that you need and then you it, it very nicely says to do everywhere that you need to fill in the blanks and then you can um, go ahead and and create flesh out the package so we're going to use that ROS package utility to create a Python package by using this command. Ooh, why does it not like ROS2 uh, package create? Let's see. Oh, I need to be in the source directory because that's what it needs to to be in the source directory uh, because the package files are created inside the source directory there that's better so in in here you can see that it, it created a number of packages and the package that it created is called hello world talker um, and it's got, it's got this package.xml file that we talked about. It doesn't have very much in it, but this is what we're gonna define, right? It has a um, name for your package. You can define the version, always good practice when you're deploying code is to roll the version um, if you're making, and then if you, depending on whether it's a small update or a functional update or a full new, application altogether, you can change each of these um, minor, major, or um, full version numbers, uh, or patch minor and major version numbers. Uh, and then you can describe your package in this description, offer a point of contact, word of warning, don't put your personal email on it if you're working somewhere. Uh, it's good to have like support at something.com um, unless you wanna be flooded with, with software inquiries. And then you can describe your license. You This is the, the meat of the operation is where you define your dependencies, uh, both for the package itself, but also for testing. So when we did the workspace workshop, we defined gtest as one of the test dependencies. Today, we won't be defining tests, but, but these are some of the bare bones um, components of a package that that when you run that command, uh, ROS will, will populate for you and then you can build on top of that. So it gives you this handy dandy init file for your application, the hello world talker. And I'm gonna jump to the actual workspace that, uh, that I created earlier, um, where we'd already, where I defined this talker node.py. Um, so I'm gonna go back to that readme, let's see. so I can reorient. Uh, oh, we should talk about the setup config and setup.py. So because this is a Python package, um, you, you will have a setup.py and setup.config, which is Python's requirements for building its Python code into an executable. So the config just tells you what the um, these, the uh, directories are for the application, um, the different libraries and the installation scripts. And the setup.py, this 
you know, you don't have to fill it out yourself again. Um, the ROS package tool did this for you, um, but it calls the different, it, it defines the different um, dependencies for Python, which conveniently are listed in package.xml. So there's not gonna be a lot of changes here other than defining the executable that runs when you uh, when you run this package. So what I want this package, so this, I'm calling this package the hello world talker. And what I wanted to do is talk. So I'm gonna call it, call my executable talk and, and define the main function for it, which will be this hello world talkers talker node. And in here, there's a main function. So far, so good. So far, so yes. good. All right, good. So let's go back to that readme, make sure I didn't miss anything. Uh, we talked about, yeah, we talked about the setup.config, setup.py. Um, so now it's time to build the package. And I, I'm gonna uh, take this, talker well um i i think i'll leave the exercise to you to to start it from scratch um what i would do is define this talker node.py in the hello world talker and let's just let's just try that why don't we just try that so i can bet any issues that happen all right so within my mini workspace, I now added this talker. I'm gonna have to modify this entry point as well. So we're gonna go back and say, um, let's see, setup.py, say here, build this. And I think that's about it. Resource doesn't change. We don't have anything in test. Package.xml, there are some things here. Let's see if there's anything else. Oh, we will have, yeah, let's look at the dependencies. So let's let's actually look at docker.node.py and what it has, right? Um, before we jump to building it. So what we're defining here is a is the node that I talked about, um, and the node is is this this elemental ROS class that runs some piece of code, and it it sends its output to a topic that we call chatter. Um, and in this in this case, what we're doing one of the things that ROS two has that's very uh, well, well codified compared to ROS one is the node class, um, and it it uses this um, RCLPY library. So everything Python in ROS is is um, under the purview of this RCLPY. So Python packages that you can use, you can use this node class both in C++ and in Python. Um, but if I'm using it in Python, then I'm, I'm gonna need to call this RCLPY library. You'll see stood messages. So this is your C++ standard library, but in, in Python. So Python defines this class as well. Uh, it gives you the string class. So these are the, the classes that uh, the libraries that uh, we'll use or the packages, the Python packages that we'll use and we'll import the classes from those packages. So we create our own node and we're gonna call it the talker node. And this node inherits its, uh, some of its functionality from the base class for, uh, uh, that RCLPy provides. And, and we'll initialize it based on the super init, based on the Python's base class. Uh, so when I say init and then super init, it's running the constructor in the base class. Um, and then I define a publisher. So what this publisher does is it publishes a string to the chatter topic and it has a buffer of 10 messages in case, you know, it doesn't, doesn't just publish and vanish, it just stores the last 10. Um, and then I'm gonna define a timer. 
So this timer, it runs a callback. It's a, it's a callback function. So it runs the self.run function um, every one second. And so what does this run function do? Um, and then I, I, I set some counter to zero in the initial, uh, initial constructor. The run function uh, defines a string message, hello world, and it it says this is hello world number zero at first it publishes that message to the um the chatter topic and then it increments that by one so if i didn't want to uh publish to a topic here what i'm going to do is real quick uh i'm going to comment out this one and just do a logger so we can see within the within the terminal, we can see it publish. Without... So the timer increments every one second. Uh, sorry, what? The timer increment increments every one second. Correct. The, the timer increments every time the run function is called, uh, or the actually the counter increments every time the run run function is called, and the run function is called every one second with this create timer callback function. Right, so this node essentially, when you when you initialize this node, it it creates this callback function that calls the run function every second. And so, most importantly, now so that's your that's your node class, right? Um, now we need to define the main function, which is what will compile build into in the executable. So the main function. Uh, initializes the ROS communications with this RCLPy in it. It defines this node class, right? So this takes this Docker node and it constructs a node. And then we use the, this is uh, the RCLPy spin. Uh, without spin, the node just runs once, right? This, this RCLPy spin keeps the node running until until we shut down ROS. So um, if you ever run into issues where like I have a node, but I don't see it doing anything, it's probably because rclpy.spin wasn't defined. So rclpy.spin keeps the node running. And when the node is running, it's calling run every second. Um, does, this, does this code make sense? Yes, it does. Awesome. So now with a uh, per Python convention, we say name not main uh, equal equal when when the name um, that that's declared in in the executable is main run this main function, um, and and then this is what we say in setup dot by is the executable talk, and now we're gonna build it. So we're gonna go back to the workspace level. Oops. Rx workspace. And say Colcon build. So it's building this hello world docker uh, and it puts some files in the install directory. Here you can see there's like a talk executable, right? Um, and that's what we're going to call when we, this is the other part, source install setup.bash. This tells um, the terminal that, oh, there's, there's some new files in the setup.bash. Uh, would you please add them to the ROS packages? And now when I say ROS to hello run, I get a hello world talker and talk. And it's saying hello world in the terminal. Importantly, this is just the the um, 
we're still, what you're seeing right now is not the topic. This is just printing something to the terminal. If I say, uh, because I added a logger function in here, so when I go back here, it's it's printing printing stuff to the terminal. I'm gonna I'm gonna comment that out, and I'm going to rebuild this. Okay, so then it's not log putting anything out to the terminal because you generally don't want to flood the terminal with with stuff. You want things to go to the the. Ooh, I didn't build, so I'm gonna say call, call and build. Let's try that again. I'll run that. All right. So now that's running. That node is running, but we don't see anything happening because we're not looking at the chatter topic. And in order to see what's happening on the ROS2 chatter topic, what we can say is ROS2 topic oh, chatter. And now it's showing you what's going on in the chatter topic. Um, and if you see, split this terminal again, um, you can see that you can see the stalker node publishing to the chatter node. So far, so good? Yep. Awesome. Um, Eric, where, where are you at? Uh, Eric? Heard it my second go. Uh, don't, don't worry about me. Uh, OK. Uh, um, <laughs> don't I, I'm in the mud. <laughs> <laughs> All right. No, that, okay. I'm just wondering if I can help uh, in any way because I I, I want to make sure that that we can pull you in if you if something doesn't seem to be working right. Uh, I will reach out for you uh, in the off hours. Thank you so much. Sounds good for sure. All right. So that was the uh, the Python um, uh, talker node. Now what we want to do is, is create a listener node uh, or a translator node, which is going to use this subscribe. So ROS follows uh, you know, this um, pub sub or publisher subscriber pattern um, or allows for it. It has other patterns too, but it allows you to create this publisher subscriber pattern where, where you can uh, publish things to a topic and then subscribe from that topic. Uh, and different applications can subscribe to the same topic or publish to the same topic. And you can set it up so that that's how the communications are facilitated. Um, so this time we're going to create um, a C++ package in the workspace. So this was, remember how we did the uh, ROS2 package command to build the Python package. Similarly, we, we can use that command to build a C++ package as well, or, or create a template for a C++ package. So I'm gonna go just scroll up in my terminal and I see that I see this uh, ROS package create hello world talker. So I'm gonna modify this so that it's using C++ instead. So this will be CPP. This will be a mint CPP. This will be a translator. All right. And uh, oh, we have to create us. We have to go into our source folder, don't we? Uh, make sure my command is correct too. And I didn't miss anything else. So, yep, we did the um, Hello World talk. Saw the chatter on the, the second terminal and yeah, we're gonna go to the C++. Uh, so, 
again, we'll go to the source directory. I'm going to just copy and paste this. It is RCLCPP, just similar to what we did. You know, earlier we used the RCL file library, which is which had all the ROS um, packages in Python or the, the critical ROS packages in Python that uh, that it needs to translate uh, Python code to, to the ROS environment. And now we're going to do the same with the, the RCL CPP. Uh, so we'll create this Hello World translator. We'll use the amend CMake um, build package and it creates in my source folder, creates another package. This one's called translator. And unlike the Python, um, it has, instead of a setup.config and setup.py, it has the CMake list, right? Um, and so the CMake list we were familiar with, it's a little bit different just because it has a lot of amend commands in it, um, but it, it's essentially the same format and um, it, it uses amend uh, to, to develop things on top of the existing CMake for us. Um, and then call cone talks to amend. So, so that's why we're using um, amend here. And then, of course, for every package, you have a package.xml. So package.xml has this. Um, here, you got to define the dependencies. Somehow, we managed to build this last package without defining the dependencies, but you do want to add them. So in, this, in that case, we added the std messages. Uh, in this case, we'll, we'll go back and we'll add um, these two messages again, because it will be using that. So let's say, and and then the other thing we want to add is we'll add that later. Uh, now, CMake list, we also need to define, uh, remember how we defined the executables the last time. Um, so this is what we need to do is create the libraries that we're using. Uh, so we haven't added any code here yet, right? Uh, when we did the ROS package build, um, we just, or the ROS package uh, create, we just added like a shell here that doesn't have any code. So we want to add some code for the translator. Um, so the last time we talked about how uh, we can define the libraries using a header file and, and, and uh, some other C++ file where a class is defined. Uh, sure, we can install the C++ extension pack inside this. Sorry about that detour. Uh, switch that off. And, and then in here, so what we want to do is fill out this package that the shell package that we created with some actual um, implementation of our translator. Uh, and so I'm going to add this code in there. And then in the SQL source, we're going to add the C++ file. So this translator is a, a, a class that's built just like we did in, in Python, um, where we used the RCL CPP package here in C++. We are using the RCL CPP header. Uh, we're using the standard messages library and this, the string header. Uh, we'll create this hello world translator class that that inherits from the RCL CPP node class and uh, we'll define a function to translate something as translate it, an input string um, and it's going to get that string by subscribing to a subscription and it's going to publish its output using a publisher uh, and we'll define this output message as a string as well. Uh, so let's look at the implementation of the translator node now. 
we've got the constructor that that just says oh i started a node so this node um sub you know the the sub class the parent class that it inherits from uh is is going to name the node hello world translator the logger is going to say oh the hello world translator has started and it's going to initialize a subscription and what the subscription is subscribing to is the chatter topic and again, it's maintaining a buffer of, of 10 messages that it's subscribing to. Um, and uh, it's going to use the, it's going to bind to the translate. Um, uh, it's going to send whatever it subscribes to this translate function. So it's going to send this to the translate function um, and I'm not sure what the placeholder does, but but I'll, I'll put that in, you know, as a as a TBD in the um, The publisher is what publishes. It's just this thing that we'll call later in the in our output function. But for now, it it's just given a name called Charla, which is Spanish for chatter, and it publishes into a buffer of ten messages. So that's what the constructor for the Hello World Translator does. It initializes a subscription, a publisher, um, and then it, it binds the subscription to the translate function. So the translate function, anytime there's a subscription received, uh, the translate function is called. And this translate function takes the message that it receives from the subscription and translates it. So we use the, the C++ string a library find function to look for hello world. If we find hello world, um, we translate it to hola mundo. If we don't, um, we, we just say cannot translate. Um, so this this end boss is, is just if we if find returns a null string, uh, it says cannot translate. But if find returns, um, something other than null that means we found hola mundo and and then we we uh, append the the number the the counter that we defined k in the python we append that to the string and then we publish it to the publisher so that's our library for the hello world translator now we actually have to define a main function that that uses that library and update the packages. So let's pull in the main function as well. So this main function, same as as Ross before, it initializes the uh, Ross communications for for C plus plus. It spins the node, right? So it'll keep that node spinning and then it'll shut it down when the function stops executing. So we'll put that in here as well and then let's update package.xml oh we don't need to update back we need to update cmake uh, so here we have to define the executables we have to define the dependent libraries a little bit more involved than than python in this case because it's um, not using package.xml directly, or at least that's not how I've set it up. Uh, I'm, I'm sure that might be an easier way to do this. Um, let's see. So go back to this CMake list and see what we're missing here. So we got to create this. Uh, we've, we first have to define, put our dependencies in. So let's do that. All right, so this this listed message, everything else was already there. Um, then we can define the libraries. So we just create a, a new library called Translator Live, and it uses the Translator node C++. It depends on RCL CPP and standard messages. And then we take the include, uh, um, declare the include directories too, so that it knows where to look for the headers. Um, and we declare that as as public, so that uh, other uh, 
uh, functions that are using this library also have access to those include headers. So let's use that. Pull that up here. And then lastly, we will define the executables. So uh, we're, our executable is going to be translate. Uh, it's going to use the main function as its entry point. It'll depend on the um, RCLCPP uh, library and it'll use the hello world translator include directory. It'll depend on the translator lib where the implementation is defined. And then here we're, we're also going to say, uh, put the executable in the install directory, right? So the install directory is going to contain this, um, this executable and that way, Ross, uh, when we do source uh, install setup dot bash, it'll be available as a Ross package that we can call using Ross to run. All right, go back up. So I believe that's pretty much it. Let's test it now. Um, so notice that I'm in the source folder where I have both the Python and the C++ packages. So now I added some changes for the C++ package, but when I say Colcon build, it's just gonna build everything. So Colcon build is going to handle building whatever changes there are in all of the packages in the source directory. So now it, it built the Docker. Uh, it's now building the translator. And let's see how it does. Oh, wow. I'm surprised it built without any errors. That's good. Uh, so now we have a Docker and we have a translator. So let's see if we can run the run, run both. Uh, and I'm going to open up a bunch of different terminals here so that we can see what's going on. And this is a pretty typical arrangement for us is that you have at least four terminals running at the, at the same time you know, to, just to see all the different applications that are happening and where they're publishing and what they're publishing and how often they're doing it. Uh, so I'm just going to open up a few here and I'll say, and move this to the editor area so that we have a little more room and then add another try and move it as well up here so now we have a bunch of terminals i'm going to say source install setup dot bash so that all of these terminals know about the translator. So bash calls everything in the bash uh, window? Uh, so setup.bash, what it does is it takes, when we, when we wrote the um, CMake, uh, when we wrote the CMake list, right? Uh, we described the, the uh, destination for the C++ executable. We said, put the C++ executable in the um, install folder. So when we call source install setup bash, it puts the 
executables in the install folder into the ROS package known list. So that when I call uh, ROS to run, it knows um, that that uh, hello world translator is a package that it can run. Got it, thank you. Yep. So now I'm gonna say ROS to run hello world talker and talk in one. So let the talker talk. Ross to run hello world translator translate. So the translator will translate. And what the talker is publishing to is the chatter topic. So we're gonna see what's going on on the chatter topic. So Ross to topic echo chatter. And then we're gonna see what's going on on the translated topic, Charla. Okay. So let's see what happens. Talker stalking, translators translating. Let's see if there's anything on the chatter topic. Yep, we're seeing hello world. And let's see if it's getting translated. Yep, it's getting translated. Pretty neat, huh? Yeah, that so, is. Yeah, I mean, like in in less than in in less than an, in like an hour and a half, we've basically had uh, built C plus plus, built Python, and have them both communicate with each other. Uh, so Ross makes it really easy to do all of these things. And then I'm just gonna, one last thing, I'm gonna say RQD graph, see what's going on. You can see all the things that are going on in, in this handy dandy graph. Uh, and there's more going on, as you can see, there's the um, ROS to command line daemon, it's publishing to it, um, you know, you can, because we have it running in these terminals, you can see all the other stuff going on behind the scenes, but this is the thing that matters. How, how did you get from the one to the other? Uh, by unchecking the debug button. I see, thank you. Yep. There we go. All right, close this terminal, go back here, and control C to stop this, control C to stop that. Control C again and Control C again. So we've stopped everything now. Um, any questions so far or any any comments? I'm following so far. Yeah, right. it's amazing that you can uh, interrogate each one of the uh, uh, sub programs that are working. Uh, yeah. yeah, in real time. Yeah, it's it's really neat. Um, you know, it, it's it's nice to be able to see the entire architecture. And to me, what the the most powerful thing is that you can have all these different applications talking to each other so seam seamlessly, even though they're written in different languages. Um, yes, so and I can see that the graph is going to be uh, very useful in uh, the uh, development process. Yep, yep. There's also another utility called Arvis, which is used when, you know, when you have like a, a map or you have something with coordinate systems or you have a plot, anything like that, that that's the uh, utility uh, that's very um, heavily utilized in, in the robotics world uh, for making plots and making maps and things. All right, so we're nearing the end, but there's one last thing uh, that's worth knowing, um, and that is that is launch. Where, where did the time go? That time flies, <laughs> <laughs> right? Um, but yeah, this so this last thing, uh, you know, you saw that we had to launch all these uh, these executables manually. 
uh, in a typical application, there may be so many and they all have to la uh, launch either in a certain order or they 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 have you don't want to do it onesie twosie like I did. And so what um, ROS2, uh, well, ROS1 has it too. You can define a launch file. In ROS1, you could define it as an XML file. Uh, ROS2 actually lets you define it as a Python file. So it just looks a lot cleaner, um, easier to see what's going on. And so you can create a launch file. Uh, and I'll show you in the README how you create one. Uh, you essentially go to the workspace and you, you create a directory. And then um, you write the, actually, yeah, I, 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 there's probably a way that just like packages that you can create a template. But what I did was I went to this uh, reference that I stated and I just picked up a launch file there and I modified it. So this is what my launch file looks like. It's a, a launch file for talk and translate. So as the title suggests, it, it launches the talker node and it launches the translator node. Uh, you just do uh, list the executable, you give it a name, um, and then you just use the ROS command to launch. And so this time, what I'll do is, um, when you, so when I, another thing that I miss, I didn't do is when you use the launch file, uh, you also want to go and update the, the package.xml to specify that you're going to be launching it using ROS to launch. Uh, so you identify that as a dependency, build everything again. So I'm going to just assume that we did that. Um, and and just go straight to launching by saying ROS to launch. Let's see, go back. Out and then just go back to our original workspace where, where I already have this defined and say ROS to launch. Ooh, you didn't like that, why? Uh, package name. Was it because there was a space at the end? No, I... I snap food. Um, it doesn't, it, it's just going to run the Python file. So ROS2 with the, the Python file is, is the, the Python file is the launch file. Or did, is it ROS2 launch and not ROS2 run? It's probably ROS2 launch, launch file. Yep, there it is. Okay, so it launched the files. Uh, it, it did the, uh, launched the Hello World Translator. Let's see what's running in RQT Graph. So this time it's running the translator and the talker. It's showing that I'm not seeing the topics. So maybe I didn't describe the topic. So I'm super curious to see if they're if they're there. Um split this terminal and say ROS2 topic. Adder. So yeah, it doesn't look like I uh, there's something then missing in the launch file uh, because I'm not seeing the the chatter on the um, the topic on. Let's see if it's on the other one. Yeah, nothing here either. So this is this is a glitch. I'll see what's going on with the launch file and push a fix, but. Um, other than the launch file, we could see that everything seems to be working well and, and um, the different applications are running and talking to each other. And there you have it. That's the power of ROS. Uh, any questions? Any observations, thoughts?
Well, no, it just looks uh, very uh, easy to, to use. It builds itself. And uh, I, I can't wait to get it up and running on my machine. Nice. Yeah, let me know if you have any, you know, if you run into any issues, just reach out to me on we'll GitHub. Do. I'll let you know my um, failures and I'll let you know my successes. I really appreciate this. For sure. All right, well, um, if that's that's uh, pretty much it for this workshop series, uh, any thoughts about what would help for future workshops or, or follow-up workshops or would you like to see? Um, you know, we're, we're trying to figure out uh, what the, the robotics chapter can do better for its members and uh, I'd love to, to hear um, just your open feedback about it. Th thanks. Uh, I'll, uh... I'll be in touch with you if, if I have any thoughts on the issue. I'm sure I will have some. Yeah, same, same here. And I think that, uh, you know, I think that uh, if we get the packages installed uh, before you start talking, of course it would help. And I, uh, uh, I, I'm really remiss at uh, being behind the power curve, but um, I'll be running these and looking at your video and uh, doing it again and doing it well, <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm sure you will. Thank you so much. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's. Uh, I I think you know the this is the first time we're trying something of this format. Um, so I think for the future workshops, they'll probably have this these readmes well beforehand, and they can try and get some things done uh, beforehand. But um, we could also time it so that you know, we can, we can do it more collaboratively. Uh, and hopefully with, once these videos are up, people are, are able to have some back, more background than before um, on, on getting set up. And, and then it can be more, uh, more involved in terms of troubleshooting any issues that they had while running. No, you set it, this up well, it's remarkable content and it, it, it flows. So really appreciate this, Sana. For sure. Thank you for participating and thank you for, for being so patient with all the glitches and, and uh, you know, I uh, really appreciate your time and attention, uh, both Darren and Yurik. Thank you.